Hi, this is Peter with a short video, how to build a custom intake manifold adding fuel injection on an aluminum intake. Hey, it's Peter from Cars and Guitars, and I am so excited we get the most exciting part of my Cobra build, building the motor. I just got all the parts back from the machine shop, I got my 351 block right here. This has been bored out 30 thousandths, the entire thing has been decked, main bearings have been line honed, custom girdle, handle all the horsepower on the bottom. We got the 408 stroker crank, all clearance board inside, make sure it doesn't hit anything. The 408 crank has been balanced, zero balanced. The pistons, rod assemblies, everything has been balanced to be a zero balance engine. Before I get to all that stuff, we go into the engine build uh, and all the components that I'm putting into it, I'm going to start on the hardest part, the intake manifold. The thing that's going to make this motor completely unique, 351 motor, dual throttle body, 20, 2100 CFM, and fuel injected. So, but I had to make a lot of modifications. First, I had to mill out each one of these runners for the intake. I got the bungs for the injectors and I got to put these in here, line them all up and I have to weld in all of the bungs for the injectors. The next thing I have to do is I made the billet spacer for the throttle bodies. And this came out gorgeous. Thank you to my friend, good friend Dennis. Uh, I'll show you a picture of him. He's a great guy, excellent machinist. He made this billet spacer for me. And this is going to go on here first. I'm going to weld the, the spacer all the way around, seal it in tight, uh, form it all so it blends right in perfectly. And then the throttle bodies will go right on top, uh, just like this. And it is going to look really, really cool. This is going to be a one of a kind motor. I've never seen a dual plane, dual intake. A dual quad throttle body motor with fuel injection and the way I'm going to build this thing. Let me show you how I'm going to get this manifold custom made. Welding aluminum is one of the hardest things to do. Very difficult to weld if you don't have a good machine. I have a Miller Synchrowave 200. This is a fantastic machine. I use it for everything welding aluminum, steel, stainless steel. Uh, I've even welded some titanium with it, and I think it's a fantastic machine. I like the Miller products. I also have the Miller plasma cutter, and that does a fantastic job as well. When welding anything, including aluminum, the most important thing is cleanliness. I had to take this and clean this off. I had to get all that dye off of there, make sure I have a clean surface to start with. And I just can't have a 90 degree edge right here. So what I have to do is I have to put a little radius on there. I've got to cut that down. So the uh, filler metal has a place to go, so when I sand it down and polish it, this will look like a seamless uh, part here. When I put this on here, when I put this and get it welded, I want to make it look like it's all one piece. So I have to uh, cut a radius in here, get the filler material all the way in there, and then I can sand it down. And the first thing to start with is uh, I have a die grinder with a nice carbide burr on it, and I'm just going to put a radius all the way around. Okay, I have both parts chamfered. I'll try and get a close up here so you can see what I got to do. This is where it's going to be welded right through here. There's enough room in there to get good penetration between the spacer and the manifold. And it'll be filled in and then I can sand it down. And this will look absolutely flawless, nice and flat. And then I'll polish this whole thing. Before I do that, before I show you how I'm going to weld this on, or before I weld this on, let me show you my machinist. The coolest part of the project. The coolest? No, milling out the uh, billet spacer. I use low RPM for these counters. Pretty neat, huh? It'll be in the video. I'll be in the video. Raising Enterprises. Raisin performance. Mill, mills we got them. That says raisin performance. Anything you need. Welding aluminum is extremely difficult and tricky. It takes a lot of control of the puddle. I have my foot on the foot switch. I'm controlling the amperage. I'm using a sweeping motion to move the puddle along. And I have my filler rod, 4043 filler rod, and I'm dipping it in the puddle as I move along. Very important not to dig the electrode into the puddle because it will contaminate. I'm using a 8 inch 100% tungsten electrode, that's the one with the green on the end, 4043 filler rod, 
and I'm using pure argon. You can mix helium in with this. If you're going to get deeper penetration and you're welding something a little thicker, you can mix helium in there and get some deeper penetration, but it's not necessary for what I'm doing right now, and I'm getting beautiful results as it is, so I'm going to keep going, stacking dimes. Here's the start of the welding. Got one side just welded and sort of blended. You can see how the weld blends right in. I'm trying to make this look like it's all one piece and I think I'm going to get there eventually. Anybody who does aluminum welding, you know, it takes an immense amount of heat so keeping this from warping while getting that uh, shape is very, very difficult. But I'm getting there. You got to do these bungs next. Now that I have everything welded in, all the bungs are welded in on both sides and the billet spacers welded in. Got to spend hours of grinding, blending, polishing, completing this manifold before I can powder coat it. Whenever you do stuff like this, remember safety glasses. Safety is the most important thing. You can't replace your eyes. And hearing protection. You don't want to lose any more hearing than you already have and I've already lost a lot. So hearing protection is important. <laughs> So here's the finished manifold, just sitting on the block right now. Next step would be to bead blast and powder coat it. I haven't done that because I'm not sure what color I want that. I'm not sure what color I'm painting the engine compartment, so I'll do that when I get the motor finished. But I just want to show you the billet spacer welded and blended in. And all of the bungs for the fuel injectors are welded and blended in as well. I have one side with the fuel injectors mounted and the Edelbrock fuel rail. Looks really, really cool. A lot better than just having two throttle bodies mounted on top and having regular carburation in there. Looks pretty, pretty cool so far. Like I said, next step will be powder coat, which means I've got to be blasted first and be ready to mount. I'm working on the cylinder heads right now, so my next video should be putting the motor together.